Hello and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be showing you a flip through of my Clever Fox Teacher Planner. And this is something that I use separate from my teacher plans, like my curriculum uh, that I keep at school. So this is for things that I need to do, whether it's things to prep or data or email or anything like that, just to keep myself organized. Um, this is not like a curriculum based teacher planner. So this is the Clever Fox teacher planner and this is the A5 size. It does come with three ribbons. I do have a blank flip through of this planner in my, uh, excuse me, on my channel if you would like to check it out. So we're going to go ahead and do a flip and show you how I have it set up for the school year. We have been in school for only one week um, and so I will kind of show you how that is going. So I didn't fill any of this stuff in. Um, this is the yearly kind of overview for important dates. And I did put um, my kids IEP uh, due dates in here. So here's 2023 and 2024. The schedule of school events, I did not fill this in because I have this information in the monthly section. Um, but I will give probably another update um, once we are halfway through the school year and we'll see if I have found a way to use those pages. So right now they are blank. So the first section that I have used, um, I don't fill out this information either, their student information or the communication log. Um, I'm going to wait and fill that out a little bit later. Um, so the first section that I used was the checklist and the blank one looks like this. So this is the student checklist section. And I have used this for IP meetings and grades. So the first half, these are all things that need to get done when I am working on an IP. So there's definitely like a lot of steps. Um, so I put the steps on the top. At this point, I've been doing this for 12 years um, in my current position. I kind of know this already. I still like to have it written out um, for, I feel like those times when I am just starting to get burnt out and stressed, I just uh, like the visual kind of reminder. Um, so steps are up here and then students' names will go on the sides. Then for grades, for report cards, I have November, February, April, and June, and then the steps that I need to do to get grades done. The next section is for students set up, set up and end of year close out. So this is kind of the same thing again. So the first half of the year I have in gold, um, and then the end of year I have in this green color right here, and then plenty of space to write down all of my students' names. Um, most of this is already done, but I knew I was going to be filming this, so I didn't want to go ahead and uh, fill it in. So then we're going to hop over to the monthly section, and that follows up the student checklist. So this is just a blank page, and this was just some Spanish um, kind of review that I was doing, so I went ahead and wrote it in here. So here is the month of August. And this is an undated planner, so I just use these date dots because I always, always, always will write the wrong date. So I just made it easy for myself and use date dots. So we started the end of August, so not much going on up here. I did have some trainings, but um, I didn't use this until school actually started, so I did not go back like, and fill those trainings in. So here we have August, and then there's a blank page that takes you from one month to the next. So we have September and these um, no school pictures uh, stickers came from a sticker sheet um, that's in the back that I will show you. Then we have another blank. Then we have October. So I just kept it really minimal because that's what works the best for me. November, December, then we have January, and I basically just chose the date dots that kind of matched the monthly sticker, February, here's March. 
April. And what I'll use these monthly pages for are primarily meetings. That's usually what goes on here or due dates. Nothing really curriculum based. Then we have May and June. And I didn't do the rest of June because school is out. So I will not be using this planner anymore. Okay, so then we go into the weekly sections. And this was, um, let's see, this was teacher work week. So I kind of went ahead and filled this side in of what I thought I was going to use this for. This is kind of what I used um, my planner for when I was using my planner for last school year. So I went ahead and filled some in. Uh, I couldn't find my watch, so I didn't record any of my steps and I didn't need to run any errands um, because it was just a teacher work week that week. So definitely plenty of space. So this was the first week of school and definitely plenty of space again. This is a larger planner than I used last school year. Um, the purpose for that was really the monthly sections. I was just running out of space and I kind of just wanted something that was um, more like a planner that was more teacher focused so I didn't have to add as much um, to my planner to make it work for me. So then here is, well, I guess I can go ahead and move this. The second week of school and this week I decided just to cut the headers down and I went ahead and filled in all of my dots this is just like the zig uh, color dot because I really like this pastel blue kind of goes with everything so that is ready to go and then when I get to work um, usually that morning I will look back at the previous week or of course I check my email first and then kind of go through and fill everything in so I have my top three to do email and prep and then here is what a blank week looks like. So you could definitely fill this in um, a different way. If you teach multiple subjects, you could go in here. You could also definitely use this um, for your curriculum and make it more curriculum based. But like I said, I have a separate uh, kind of curriculum binder that I share with um, another teacher that stays at school. And then in the back, after all the weeklies, you get um, some monthly grids. I can't show you because I have confidential student information, but this is the grid pages. And then in the back, this is a folder, and I have lots of different stickers in here. So I have these teacher stickers. This is from Kiss Prints Co. And I just cut the sticker sheets in half so they would fit in here. Um, so it's basically all different events, food drive, field trip, uh, fall break testing. And these I used last school year also. Then I have, um, actually I can take this out. That was from a sticker sheet. I've got some coffee cups, uh, Zoom meeting, which I probably need to put those at the top. IP meeting stickers, um, some deco. These are the weekly stickers. These are from Plan to Plan Sticker Co. And I'm using this to mark down um, the weeks of the school year. And then these stickers right here are the ones that came with this planner, which was awesome. So there is a lot of those sheets and then this is the teacher planner quick start guide that came with this um, that's four pages which is very helpful if you are a first-year teacher or if you're just kind of not sure how to set up your teacher planner so I have all of those things right back here and they fit and it still closes and then there's also a pen loop so that is how I have my teacher planner set up it's been working so far um, pretty well. I'm still getting accustomed to going back to the A5 size, but I definitely have the space and I have the sections that I need. So I hope that you guys found this helpful. If you enjoy planner related videos, please subscribe and I'll talk to you in my next one. Bye!